Hello friends, hello family, hello faith walkers. God bless you all this morning. Welcome to another edition of Christianity with me with your hostess Michi, where we sip tea and discuss the word of God. I pray that you all have had an awesome week, that God has kept you, strengthened you, that he is continuing to bless you, build you up in his most holy faith, build you up in his strength, build you up in his love, build you up in his honor. God bless you all today. I am listening to my Wait on the Lord. I don't own the rights to this music, but it is Wait on the Lord by Dappy T. Keys. You can find it on YouTube, and I do not own the rights to this music. But I just want to thank God for his ministry, Dappy T. Keys' ministry, because I often listen to his music in times of prayer, meditation, fastings, and reading the word. So I'd like to share this with you once again. Amen. We are helpers one another in the kingdom. We need one another. We have to rely on one another because no one person has it all and so with that being said i want to also introduce my tea today i am continuing okay i went back y'all <laughs> i went back to my sarasop and blueberry blend because you all know i kept saying i love this blend and so today i am drinking this is a blend of sarasop and blueberry um i did not sweeten it although i do have sweeteners organic sweeteners i have clover honey sweeteners and i have the um agave sticks and so both of those are let me see if I can grab if I can grab them and, and show them to you. This is the clover honey stick. Okay, and this is organic. And then here this is my agave and this is plant based. Okay. I didn't sweeten today. Some days I I feel like sweetening, which is very rare because I can drink my tea without any sweetener but I am icing see the ice in my tea we are in summer months and so it's kind of hot so we do want to ice our teas to stay cool and so I'm gonna go ahead and take a sip of my tea mm, I guess I should have said a gulp <laughs> I love this tea I love it so can I take one more gulp okay thank you all Mm, yes, and let me tell you the benefits of blending blueberry and soursop. Blueberry tea has potential benefits to protect against cancer, strengthen the heart, and to increase bone density, and to boost the immune system. And we're talking about regular intake of blueberry tea. And um, I prefer organic blueberry tea, but since the soursop is organic, if you want to get one that is not organic, that is your choice. But the blueberry has the potential for this. Also, um, soursop has the um, potential benefits to treat stomach ailments, fever, parasitic infections, hypertension, which is um, high blood pressure, and definitely I need that. I actually went to have my blood pressure taken. I went for a physical, and my blood pressure was actually normal, you guys. Woo! And also with the um, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis is something else it may help you with, and it may be used as a sedative, some parts of the soursop. But there are also claims that soursop has anti cancer properties of the ability to fight cancer so blending your um blueberry and your soursop gives you a boom boom a double punch a double portion so i encourage it and it's just good i just love the blueberry and soursop blend it is good mm. just the taste is it's just a real they complement each other well and now that we have discussed our tea, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my music here. 
Let's gossip. So what I want to talk about today is um I want to talk about Matthew 6:24. But before I get to that, the Lord just gave me something that I want to share with everyone. There is a growing trend where um because we are understanding and we have knowledge, which is always good, that we, a lot of people, are moving away from saying the generic term God to saying the Most High Yah. And, and some people are getting away from saying using the Americanized version of the name Jesus, which is Jesus, to Yeshua or Yeshua Hamashiach. Or a version of that, the Hebrew Hebrew Aramaic versions, and so so that we can always remain unified because we have to know as the body of Christ that we have an adversary. We have a um, someone that's always fighting against unity, and where there is unity, there is strength. The Lord of the Lord God Most High, the Most High Yah already told us with the example of the towel of Babel that when men get together on one accord when a when men get of one mind God said when he saw men coming together as one unit to build the tower of Babel he said there is nothing that we cannot do, men cannot do when they come together in unity. Our adversary knows that. Why? Because it is written. It is written in heaven. God himself spoke it. And so my, I want to preface this message by saying we have to realize that just like God showed us and said, that is nothing men can do when we come together in unity we have to do all that we can to unify we have to come against all the divisions and the schisms that try to rise up in the body of Christ to continue to keep us divided so that we don't come together in Christ Jesus in Yeshua Hamashiach in God in Yahweh in the Most High Yah, whatever you want to call him, we cannot allow these names to divide us in the body of Christ, in the body of Yeshua Hamashiach. Because we have to remember this thing also, that it's God himself who confused the languages. He confused the languages and made it to where we all did not speak the same words. We all did not speak the same sentences. So therefore, we could not understand each other. Unless we learn Spanish or God gives us a, a, a supernatural ability to know Spanish, to know Portuguese, to know um, Latin, to know French. We do not know it. And so we speak that that we know, unless endued by God's power for his glory to do otherwise. And so um, my point for saying this is because God, the Most High Yah, is the one that confused the languages. Let us not allow one calling our God, the Most High Yah, or let us not come against one who's using the, the word Jesus, the English American version, as opposed to saying Yeshua or Yeshua Hamashiach, meaning Jesus Christ, which is the Aramaic Hebrew version. Let us not allow Satan at this stage of the game to start using things like that to further divide us. Let us be unified in the faith. Let us know that we serve the Most High God, the Most High Yah, and His Son, Christ Jesus, Yeshua Hamashiach. And it's all the same thing. It's just a matter of the choice of language you want to use when you're calling 
those names. But know this, our God is all-knowing. He knows the our hearts. He knows the hearts of men. And he knows that whether I say Jesus or whether I say Yahshua Hamashiach or whether I say Jesus, he knows that I am talking about the Son of God. And whether I say God or whether I say um, Yah or Yahweh, then he knows that I am talking about the Most High and I'm talking about the Father. Whether I say El Elyon, whether I say God. He knows my heart and he knows that I'm talking and referring to him. So now that we've said that, let us be mindful of these things. Let's be mindful of Satan's devices because his, his schemes, the things that he uses to keep us divided in the body of Christ. So I just want us to be aware of condemning one another over the name condemning one another over what we call god okay and um we have to know that we have weaker brothers and weaker sisters okay and um we're not supposed to be fighting over things in the body of christ instead we're supposed to be coming to together I am reminded of several scriptures. Um, one is in Romans chapter 14. And I am going to read this because God is actually changing my message right now. <laughs> He'll do it, won't he? Romans chapter 14, starting at verse, verse 1. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions one person believes he may eat anything while the weak person eats only vegetables let not the one who eats despises the one who abstains and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats for God has welcomed him let us understand and know let us Understand in this instance concerning the name of God, concerning the name of calling, saying God or Yah or Most High Yah, also concerning whether we will say Jesus, Jesus, or we will say Yahshua, we should not be quarreling over these things. We give an occasion to the devil to divide the people of God when we do that. And we do not want to give any occasion to Satan. We all need to be coming together in faith, in fasting, and in prayers. We all need to be joining together as one. And when we can come together, one mind in Christ Jesus, one in Yeshua Hamashiach, one in God, one in Yahweh, one in the Most High Yah. When we come together and we come and we reason together, we can all grow. And if we do not take on the position of condemning one another, looking down on one another, because I say Jesus and you say Yeshua, because I say God and you say Yah or Yahweh, we cannot allow these schisms to further divide us in the body of Christ. We need to continue to rise up. We need to continue to share. And I'm telling you another thing, brothers and sisters in Christ, if we, many of us have been given the name Jesus, we called on the name Jesus, we got filled it with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, as the Spirit give, give utterance in the name of Jesus, I am one of those. But let us also not be fearful of knowledge. Those of us who have been successful in the things that we have been successful in, let's hold fast to that. We can hold on to it, but let us not be arrogant about it. Let us not be unyielding. Let us not be unlearned. Let us not reject those that have become more knowledgeable or st of certain things in the body of Christ. Let us rise up. Let us rise to the occasion. Let us come up for too long. 
us not reasoning together, for too long us being stuck in our silos, which are called doctrinal teachings or or um, our our denominations. For too long we have allowed the word denomination, which denotes the separation, to keep us from full knowledge of God, from the full knowledge of Christ. It is time. For us to wake up and for us to rise up. For us to wake up and rise up on every level. And so if somebody has knowledge that you did not have before and they come to you and it's verifiable in the word of God, then accept it. Don't just continue in your narrow-minded religious way and you have been shown a better way. The word of God tells us not to harden our hearts. When we receive, when, when somebody comes to us and we realize it's true, don't kick against the prick. Just like with Paul. When he said, when, when, when Jesus met with Paul on the road of Damascus and he spoke to Paul while Paul was on his way to persecute the saints and to throw them in jail. He said, when, when Jesus spoke to Paul, he said, who art thou? He says, I am Jesus. I am Yeshua, the one who you persecute. And so Paul, he said it's hard. God, Jesus told him it's hard to kick against the prick. His heart was being pricked now to receive Jesus as Lord, as Savior, as King. He was, his heart was being pricked now to receive Jesus as Messiah, Hamashiach. And that's what we have to do. And the word of God says it's hard to kick against the prick. When you've been pricked, don't kick against it. Don't do everything you can to say, well, I don't want to receive that prick. No, nope, take that. I don't want it. No, do not kick against when God is pricking your heart to teach you new things and to elevate you. Saints, friends, and faith walkers, I just wanted to get on today with a, just a short exhortation to just encourage the body of Christ, the body of believers. Let's love one another. Let's uphold one another. Let's reason with one another. And let's get on one accord in, in terms of truth. And when it's times where we do not agree on a thing, where you have one brother or sister that's doing a thing, it may not, it, as long as that thing is not sin, okay? If, if it's not sin to that brother, since I'm not talking about things that are outlined in scripture as sin, but I'm talking about things like one being weaker in faith because one believes you can eat meat, sacrifice to idols, and others you say, uh-uh, you can't eat meat, sacrifice to idols. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Okay. So we're talking vegetarian. Versus a person that eats meat. Okay. So when it comes to things like that. If you're saying okay. Well I'm a vegetarian. Because I just believe that this is the healthier way of life. And my, my I, I can tell the difference. That my body it functions on a higher level. Which may be even true. But then you have somebody who wants to eat meat. Okay? Let's not condemn one another. Let's not let these things divide us in the body of Christ. There are many other things like this. Whether it be over the name, how we pronounce the name of God or the name of Jesus. But whatever it is, let us love one another let us listen to one another. Let us not be hasty to pass judgment on one another. Because there's a spirit of arrogance that comes when we get to the place where we can't truly, cannot truly sit down and reason with a brother and sister in the scripture and learn from one another. Because none of us know it all. None of us has all 
the answers. So, saints, friends, and faith walkers, God bless you all in this wonderful day. I want you all to get your soursop and your blueberry. You can find soursop on my Etsy page at God Sip Tico, and that's all one word. Put that in your search engine in Google, and when you, it pops up, click on the Etsy page, and it'll take you right into my shop, and you can purchase organic soursop tea. Saints, friends, faith walkers, may God bless you in your endeavors. May he go before you as a battle axe and a battering ram, and conquering all of your enemies and all of your, even if your enemy is inside of you, conquering all of your fears and just building you up so that we can all stand in this evil day. God bless you all and keep you as my prayer. Bye-bye.